In Unity, we typically author behaviors by writing mono behaviors and programming in C Sharp. While C Sharp is a powerful language, sometimes it can have a steep learning curve for beginners. To lower the barrier to entry for authoring gameplay logic in Unity, we've recently acquired Bolt, a visual scripting solution that is available for Unity 2018, 2019, and 2020. With Bolt, developers and designers can visually author game logic without having to type out traditional code. It is worth noting that in this video, we'll be using Unity 2019.4 LTS to demonstrate Bolt's workflow. Below this video, we've added links for Bolt and the Bolt platformer tutorial on the Unity Asset Store. Follow the links below to add them both to your assets. Back in the Unity Editor, we need to import both packages by selecting Window, Package Manager. In the toolbar of the Package Manager window, instead of selecting Package in Project, click the dropdown and select My Assets instead. Scroll down to find Bolt in your list of assets, click Download, and finally click Import. Once the assets are imported into your project, we can install and configure Bolt. To install Bolt, select Tools, Install Bolt. A pop-up will appear asking you to install Bolt for .NET 4.x. Select Import and allow Unity to import the contents into your project. After Unity is done importing, a window will appear which lets you configure Bolt. Select Next and choose the type of naming that you're most familiar with. If you are unfamiliar with programming conventions, then human naming may better fit your needs. For the assemblies, you can scroll down and select Next to continue with the default settings. Finally, for the types, we can scroll down and click Generate. After the setup wizard finishes configuring the project, we can close it. Once you are done configuring Bolt, it's time to import the Platformer Tutorial project. Like importing Bolt, find the Bolt Kit Platformer Tutorial Assets package in your Package Manager. Download and import those assets into your project. Once all assets are imported, open the Level 1 scene, which can be found in the folder Scenes in the project window. When opened, if we enter Play mode, we'll notice that our character will not move if we press the A or D keys, as we might expect. To get the character moving, we will actually implement this behavior ourselves using Bolt. Select the player game object in the hierarchy. Click the Add Component button in the inspector and search for Flow Machine. Add it to the player game object. In the Flow Machine component, select the New button next to the empty macro field. We can save the Flow Machine macro by creating a new folder in the Assets directory called Macros. Press the Edit Graph button to bring up the Flow Graph Editor window. You should see the Start and Update event located in the center of the graph. Before we continue further, let's set up our Flow Graph Editor window to include the Graph Inspector and Variables Inspector. To open these inspectors, select Window Graph Inspector and Window Variable in the menu bar. We recommend attaching the inspector to the primary Flow Graph Editor window by dragging the tabs to the left and right side of the Flow Graph window respectively. Let's first go over some core concepts in Bolt. In Bolt, we typically want to author logic that manipulates data, and the data we manipulate are typically stored as variables. Variables are described with a type to help identify the kind of data they contain. For example, a numerical value can be described with an int type for whole numbers without decimals, or as a float type for numbers with decimal values. Complex variables are typically objects which can be composed of various simpler data types. The flow graph is where we typically implement our gameplay logic. Flow graphs, when first created, will contain the start and update event in these boxes called units. Bolt provides units which contain logic that does a specific task. The start unit runs once when the flow graph is initialized, while the update unit will run continuously as long as the game object is active. By default, Bolt provides many units, which each do their own specific task. We arrange and connect these units together in the flow graph to author gameplay logic. Lastly, we have our graph inspector, which allows us to view more detailed information about units that we enter into the flow graph. To implement our character logic, start by creating a float variable called speed under the object tab in the variable inspector. By creating a variable in the object tab, we provide a scope relative to the entire player game object. 
This allows us to define variables that we can reuse and manipulate in other flow graphs associated with the player game object. Add in another float variable, this time under the graph tab. Let's call this variable movement. When creating a variable under the graph tab, the variable can only be viewed and manipulated by the current flow graph. This movement variable we created will serve as the primary data that will determine how our character moves. To have the character respond to the keyboard, right-click on the flow graph and search for the term get axis. This unit will produce a value between negative 1 and 1 based on the key presses associated with the horizontal axis, which is typically done by pressing A or D or the left and right arrow keys. We want to use the speed variable we created previously and multiply it with our axis value. This will be the velocity we intend to provide our character with. To get the speed variable, you can drag and drop the speed variable from the object variable inspector into your graph. We can select the ports on each unit and drag our mouse to create a connection. When we let go of our mouse, a menu will appear allowing us to add a new unit as we have not connected this connection to a port on a different unit. Find the multiply unit under math, scalar, multiply, and connect the movement variable to the other port. We want to assign the multiplied value to the movement variable. Select the output port of the multiply unit and add a new unit called set graph variable. We connect the update units port to the set graph variable units import port so that we can get the input axis's horizontal value every frame. If we wanted to delete a connection from a unit, simply right click on the port of the unit to remove the connection. We have a way of generating the velocity, but how do we move the player? Well, if we head back to the editor, we can see that the player game object has a component called RigidBody2D. This component is responsible for applying physics to our player game object. Back in Bolt, we can grab the velocity associated with the RigidBody2D component by adding in the GetVelocity RigidBody2D unit. We can specifically get its Y value by connecting the output port of the GetVelocity unit with a GetY unit. Next, we get the movement variables value and construct a new vector 2 and assign the new velocity back to the rigid body. This will now cause the rigid body 2D to move in the direction of the calculated vector 2 at the calculated velocity. From the set graph variable unit's output port, we make a connection to the rigid body 2D set velocity unit's input port. Since our graph is starting to become complex, we can organize our logic by creating visual groups with custom labels. We can do this by holding the control key on Windows and the command key on Mac and clicking and dragging the mouse to highlight different units together. We can label our first group speed calculation and our last group velocity application. Save the graph and head back to the Unity editor. When we enter play mode, we can press the A or D keys and see that our character moves left and right on the platform. We can view the flow graph to see how Bolt is running our logic units each update step, which in Unity runs every frame. When we connect the update event loop to the set variable and set velocity units, Bolt executes the associated logic units associated with the set variable and set velocity units. When viewing the flow graph, we can see our logic executed continuously and see our connections animate during play mode. One of the benefits of Bolt compared to manual coding is that you can edit the flow graph in play mode to tweak existing behavior while you are test playing the level so you can see how the changes affect your game right away. After exiting play mode, the changes you introduce to the flow graph will still exist. While our character moves left and right, the sprite does not yet animate. If we inspect the player game object again, we can see an animator component attached to it. Inspecting the animator by double-clicking on the animator controller will show that all of the animation states are set up, and we simply need to manipulate a few parameters to begin animating the character. Back in Bolt, we retrieve the movement variable again and connect its output port to a comparison unit. The comparison unit will compare two values and provide us with a series of output ports that we can use depending on the condition we want to account for. For instance, if the direction we are moving in is less than zero, we then will flip our transform's x scale to negative 1 to look left. Otherwise, our transform's x axis scale will be 1, which leaves our sprite facing towards the right. 
This is done by connecting our A is less than B port to a select unit and selecting negative 1 if the condition is true and 1 if it is not. We then construct a vector 3 and set this vector 3 to the transform's local scale. We then connect the conditional port A is equal to B to a branch unit. Our false output connection port will be connected to our transform set local scale input port so that the logical step associated with flipping the sprite will be executed if A is not equal to B. This will allow our sprite to flip to face in the direction in which the player is currently moving. Let's wrap up our movement by adding in animation controls. We want to take the movement variable of the player and play an animation if the player is moving or stop animating if they are not. We can grab the movement variable and connect the output port to a math absolute value unit so that the movement variable will always be positive. Because we are flipping the transform, we'll use a single movement animation and do not need to worry about its direction. This is why we can ignore whether the value is negative or positive. We then connect the output port of the absolute value unit to an animator set float unit. The parameter name in the animator that we are interested in setting is our speed parameter. If we open and examine the animator controller, we can see that a transition from idle to walk requires the speed parameter to be greater than 0.01. Back in Bolt, we want to ensure that the animator set floats input float port is connected from the branches true output port and the transform set local scales output port. This is to ensure that the animator will always be animated regardless of the branch unit's condition. Now, when the player presses a key to move right or left, we will calculate a value between zero and our max speed, which will cause the animation to play if the character is moving and stop playing if they are not. Let's save the graph and head back to the Unity editor and enter play mode. When our character moves on the platform, we can see our character move, animate, and face in the current direction based on player input. Flow graphs are powerful tools for authoring game logic, and Bolt introduces another useful graph with a similar workflow called state machines. State machines are used when an object has a particular state that it can be in at any point in time. This is highly useful in designing enemy AI behaviors because we can define a collection of actions that our enemies can do based on certain conditions. In this platformer tutorial, we can add enemies on each platform. They can patrol, chase the player, or even idle, but this depends on where the player is and how close the player is to the enemy. If the player is close to the enemy, the enemy may try to chase the player. Otherwise, the enemy may transition into a state of patrolling or idling on the platform. This is similar to Unity's animator controller, which is a type of state machine specifically designed for animation. To learn more about Bolt's features, we highly recommend visiting the Unity Learn site to continue practicing with Bolt and to visit the documentation to learn more about Bolt's key features. Thanks for watching.